Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Iron Man 3406 here. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, my name's Nathan. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you guys remember about a year ago, I picked up this old cat grader, number 12, 1956. And uh, it's high and good time to get this thing home, I think. So, got a truck on the way. Grandpa and Dad are coming uh, with the with, uh, tri axle and a low bed. And we're going to try and get this thing home. So, um, I got to try and get the clutch freed up. When I was out here last time, got it started. If you haven't seen that start video when I first got this thing running, I will put a link up here somewhere so that you can uh, have a look. But yeah, I got to get into the clutch compartment there and have a look and have a gander and see what's going on. Um, see why I couldn't not get this thing to go into gear, get the clutch to release. So, um, Also, real quick before I forget, um, got some cool shirts here rd4 and rd7 shirts um, those are from jeff weinstock he's one of the regular viewers here on the channel so jeff thanks a lot man appreciate it these have uh, been getting some good use so uh, again really appreciate it but i'm gonna get set up here get some tools out and uh, get into that clutch compartment um, got a few other things to do before the truck gets here put some antifreeze in it get things running started all primed up and uh Hopefully when he's here, we can drive it on the trailer and not have to winch it on. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. So step one is to get the clutch cover out of the way. Four bolts hold it on. Sorry about the wind, it's windy out here today. If it's if it's loud, I apologize. It's not very warm either. Spring can't seem to make up its mind this year. It was snowing the day ago. Now a little tip for you guys working on something. I always take the bottom bolts out first on covers like this so that I don't have to fight gravity when I'm taking the if I take the top bolts off first, then you got the bottom ones and you're fighting gravity with the piece you're trying to unbolt. So I leave the top ones in to hold their thing and let gravity work in my favor. Oh, that looks nice and full of stuff. Okay, everyone, so um, if you're working on this old iron, make sure you got yourself some books. Uh, it makes your life a whole lot easier. So this uh, 
screeners got an oil clutch so to do the adjustment on the clutch that panel that I took off on the side you got to get in there and then you got three of these forks with an adjustment nut right here so you need to adjust each one so you get 3 16ths of clearance at that point number three 3 16ths so um, I've got two adjusted already they were all right tight so far so I will uh, show you how I'm getting in there to adjust the third one here so it's uh, a little bit tight in there I had to take off one of the um, side panels off the off the block and hopefully I can still get you in here and get my hands where I need them um, it's gonna be tough to see in there but I'll do my best for you So you can see right here, that's one of those adjustment nuts. And then the, 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 um, the fork goes right down here onto the, onto the uh, clutch brake. So that's what we're adjusting. We got one more to do. I'm just using the pony motor to power the engine over to get to uh, the spot that I need to be. Um, so I gotta bar it over to get to the next adjustment spot. And then uh, do that last adjustment and hopefully that frees everything up enough to disengage the clutch to move this thing. Now, the spec is 3 16 This little quarter inch wrench is the closest thing I've got to that size. So I'm just using it as my, um, my thickness to make sure I'm within the ballpark. Just get the cotter hole lined up. Back and forth one way or the other. Bend over the tab. And we should be good. That's all three forks adjusted.
everybody you got the clutch adjusted and uh, she got moving on her own so I'm just sitting here waiting on the truck and trailer now it shouldn't be too long and we'll get this uh, get this old beauty loaded on the trailer and hauled home so uh, yeah So you guys remember early on in the video I said it's absolutely crucial to make sure you got yourself some books when you're working on these old old uh, cat machines if you can't find books and you're working on a machine a crawler a dozer whatever the case um, the antique caterpillar machinery owners club has versions of lots of these books on their website in their technical library so I will uh, I'll leave a link to where that is you do have to be a member of the club to get access to those to those manuals but if you're stuck and you can't find a book and you need some information, you can sign up for the club and get access to thousands of manuals that, that are available there. So uh, again, that's the Antique Caterpillar Machinery Owners Club, or ACMOC for short, A-C-M-O-C. Um, and I'll, I'll leave a link in the description below so that if you guys want to check that out, you can. I think we should have enough axles for a 23,000 pound grader. <laughs>
Well, everybody, this is where I'm going to cut off the video. Um, we're as far as Regina, so I go one way and uh, Greater keeps going the other way to Spy Hill. So appreciate you tuning in and watching. Next video of this Greater, I'll be uh, in Spy Hill and get playing with it, tinkering with it, and uh, making it all good. So again, thanks for watching. My name is Iron Man, and uh, we'll see you next time.